Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora, and today we're going to be talking about the full moon in Libra that happens on Saturday, April 16th, with its peak time of 11.54 a.m., and that's for Pacific Standard Time. This full moon, I have a love-hate relationship with it, personally, but I think... Um, it just screams a little bit of drama to me. Uh, cinematic drama. That's the vibe that it's giving. I hope that makes sense. So let's just get into it. First aspect that we're going to touch on is Pluto and Capricorn squaring both the Sun and Aries and the Moon and Libra. So this is the aspect that I'm talking about when I say this is a dramatic full moon. Just because I don't think I would necessarily be saying that if the sun and the moon weren't where they are right now, um, and Aries and Libra respectively. But I don't know why it just screams drama to me. So I think do your best to stay grounded and to stay positive and just to stay releasing in a productive and um, conducive way. This aspect kind of has me thinking of the fight between the head and the heart. A lot of logic versus emotion. Because Libra is a very people-pleasing sign, I feel like that is a very big conflict with the Sun in Aries, which is once it's very hard-headed, it's very go-getter, it just wants to do what it wants, it's impulsive, and it doesn't really stop to think about other situations, people, feelings, and stuff like that, maybe in, you know, the day-to-day. -day. So I feel like here a little bit of a conflicting energies might arise, especially because a full moon is when the sun opposes the moon, so you have that contradiction already of wanting to listen to your head over your heart, or your heart over your head, and you don't know really what's what's the best route to go to and then you have Pluto which is the planet of making like anything super tiny super viral and super big so I just want you to keep your cool and keep grounded even though you might feel like you're having this push and pull of energy plus Pluto making it more dramatic making it more like what are you gonna do this is a life or death decision just Take a breath, step back, and remember that it's not. Direct your energy towards things you can control, towards feelings you can control, towards situations you can control. Okay, next aspect we're going to talk about is the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces. Now, that technically has gone exact this past Tuesday, April 12th, was the exact conjunction, but we're still feeling the effects because Jupiter is a huge planet, so they're still... They're still close uh, degree wise. So this is all creativity, inspiration, spirituality, exploration, um, the bending of the boundaries and exploring things that we've always wanted to explore. Find a new way of releasing today and don't be afraid to dive deep and see what beautiful things might arise from tapping into your inner self and really going through that gunk and being like, I can find something creative, productive, amazing, that's going to help me grow too as a person and in this journey. Last aspect that we have is Venus and Pisces, sextile Mercury plus Uranus and Taurus. Venus is exalted in Pisces, which means... She's treated like royalty, um, basically has n nobody really to check her or just to be like, hey, how you doing? Or hey, how's it going over there? She's just in a mega party right now, living life. Um, and again, sometimes it might be hard to check exalted planets because they kind of have like an endless source of powerful energy that they can always tap into. This sextile to Mercury plus Uranus in Taurus might be helpful though just to bring a little grounding and to explore um, other ways of communication right now, other ways of connecting with people as well. And this is not only to loved ones but it can be to friends, co-worker, business, um, other people in your environment, whatever it is. Maybe it's also a good time to think and reevaluate how you manage your values, how you manage your money, and how you manage your connections. All right, you guys, you know what time it is. It's time to pull a card. Um, this can be a message that we need to hear or some sort of guidance for this full moon in Libra on April 16th. No, we got the solar eclipse card, which is funny because we're about to our next lunation 
is part of the eclipse series of Taurus and Scorpio. So that's another thing. This is the last lunation we can manifest until eclipse season for like a month and a half. And then we can um, manifest again with the new moon in Gemini at the end of May. We have a solar eclipse, which knows happens during new moons. And basically like solar eclipse energy is here for more of a warning of it does still have the same potential as a regular new moon of manifesting and bringing to life whatever intentions, whatever uh, goals that we have planted or are um, trying to manifest. But it does warn you that it will come back times three, times five, times ten. The energies of eclipses are super powerful and kind of chaotic. So you never, even though you might be super, uh, super precise and super detailed with your intentions, you never know how that energy is going to spin those. So pretty much I take it of like, be careful with your words, really tap into that Mercury and Taurus of being very thorough and very um, stable and very clear and direct with your communication and saying really what you mean and not and not getting carried away not getting impulsive not getting emotional and just kind of saying what you feel without giving it a logical thought first for crystals to recommend i'm going to recommend black obsidian this time around not only because it's grounding and protective um, and great for release but it's also really good for emotional healing so if you need that extra support and that extra nurture you can pair black obsidian with any other crystals that you want to work uh, with for this lunation make sure to check out our description box down below for events to recommend during this full moon in libra because we have a lot and they're going to be amazing all right you guys that is it for this full moon in libra happening on saturday i hope everybody is having a wonderful week and a wonderful day a wonderful life let us know how you're feeling below i hope everybody is healthy and happy yeah thank you for being here sending everybody much much love many many blessings and have a very happy full moon in libra therapy that helps uh, treat the person on all levels of their life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, which is energetically and physically. I'm energy, this chair is energy, everything around us is energy. Uh, when we you receive an energy healing session, it's a transmission of life force. There are a lot of techniques that we can use to balance the energy field. Uh, regardless of the practitioner, there are certain ways in which each of us can connect to and help the client um, rebalance whatever it is that's going on in their energy field that is creating dis-ease or discomfort in their lives. We work with you both in person and remote. Energy healing is good for everything. So you can use it to manifest something. You can use it to uh, treat a, an ailment, whether it's something physical, mental, emotional. And we cleanse your chakras, balance you, clear out stress, physical issues, worry, fear, trauma, anxiety. Release cords, release things in your life or in your body temple that are keeping you from moving forward. I normally suggest that people get an energy healing whenever they feel that they need it. A healing energy work should be done on a regular basis, like taking a shower. If you're watching this and it crosses your mind, hmm, out of curiosity, get a healing. You're being called to it, 